Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at you. I hope this video finds you doing super well. So I wanted to put a, together a very short video on how you can walk through the Tilt Brush open source project and customize it a little bit by quickly creating your own brush and just messing around with everything that they have in here. And the reason for this is just primarily because I found the documentation in general to be pretty lacking. Uh, but speaking of which, I did want to point to a couple of resources before we just dive in here. So the first one is check out the open brush GitHub repo. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description below. And this seems to be the place where the most of the active development is happening. And this is purely for the reason that the OG tilt brush repo is actually archived and read only so you won't be able to actually put in any prs or make any changes to that the other resource that i wanted to point to is this medium blog by lachlan who has a couple tutorials that are out for customizing tilt brush some of which we're going to be doing in here i just kind of wanted to put together a visual form of this um, and point you guys in the right direction i'll make sure to leave a link to his medium blog posts uh, he has a part one and part two as well as it sounds like he's going to be making some more around open brush as well so uh, make sure he's linked in the description below so for, with all that said, let's just kind of quickly take a look here. So assets, scenes, and there are three scenes here. Most of your development is going to be happening within the main scene. And that's how you can open this up here and get to this lovely view of emptiness that we see in the scene. But within main, there's kind of three things you want to take a look at. So first is the viewpoint, which is going to be how they spawn in and handle a variety of different VR headsets and controllers. A lot of that is, for example, if I'm using Knuckles, there's a prefab that gets spawned in by this viewpoint. And that's how they map your wand controllers to various different control schemes. And you can also use this to map into a variety of different uh, types of VR headsets as well. And that's all with this VR system right here, camera eyes, controllers. And then from that point, everything else is abstracted out. The second here is your scene parent. So this is where all brushes will be getting spawned. And here's the main canvas specifically for that. So um, this is how they, they handle all the different brushes that, that get instantiated. You have your sketch controls here, which is responsible for mapping the input to specific actions. And then finally, and this is kind of the main brain, if you will, for your, for your application is these app scripts. And this is what really drives a lot of the metadata and being able to pretty quickly and easily customize your application. Most of that gets handled through this manifest. And if we take a look here real quick at the manifest, you see we have a bunch of different brushes that are assigned here, as well as each of them having their own metadata. Uh, each brush corresponds to a specific page, which is within your tilt brush panel of brushes, uh, it's each page has up to 12 brushes that you can instantiate. And then there are also environments as well. So the, the manifest in a sense basically is the metadata that allows you to customize Tilt Brush to be exactly however you want it to be. And uh, as you can see here, I was messing around with the test brush that Lachlan had provided. It's basically here controlled by a very simple, another metadata file or specifically a Unity scriptable asset, uh, which has all of the metadata associated with this specific brush. So the core things to look for are this brush prefab. The uh, GUID is responsible for making sure yours is unique. You can set a icon, which is what will appear within the panel of Tilt Brush as well as the material that you want to use. And all of that, again, is basically the metadata that Tilt Brush will use to then go ahead and spawn in the correct prefab with the correct material. There are a bunch of other settings here that you can take a look at, like depending on if you're using particles, if you're using a tube type of prefab, et cetera, et cetera. And these are really the parameters that you would tweak to create the custom brush that you would like. So from a practical standpoint, you can 
either continue to use the existing manifest or if you click right click into the assets folder you can create your own manifest uh, at the top here you can see the basics for the tilt brush menu uh, there's a lot of really awesome stuff here as well for uh, converting uh, creating new brushes, creating new environments, a lot of those manifest files in case you just don't want to duplicate things. Uh, you can pack in all of your icons into an atlas, which is a really awesome feature just for uh, optimizational purposes. And then a lot of the other features that are here as well, some of which are documented within the readme, especially if you're interested in using any of their cloud sync features. So let's just walk through real quick how you might set up your own custom brush. So let's say we want to use our rainbow asset right here. I'll go ahead and duplicate that just to get our pictures loaded up. It takes a couple seconds to, to get that set up. And we'll just name that rainbow one for now. And the second thing I want to do is just to customize it. So for that, what I'm going to do is use this to create a tube rainbow like effect. Uh, so for starters, what I'll want to do is just copy that u specific Unity asset. So in this case, the tube here is this light wire. And let's just copy that into our Rainbow One folder. And then re-import that. Okay, so we, so we now have that light wire asset in here as well as the duplicated rainbow. So we, at this point, don't need the rainbow anymore. Now we have a asset that is basically based on a tube. So that's perfect. We'll go ahead, unlock the fields here and then rename this to be like rainbow one. Basically, uh, we also need to set up the new icon, which is going to be this. So we can I believe that's oh no, this is a, a mat. So we don't have to worry about this. We will use that this icon. So let's just drag this icon over. That's going to be our new uh, asset call this rainbow one we have the brush prefab so this is what allows us to set up the prefab that is going to be our basically what draws out our mesh and there's a bunch of those prefabs that are located here within the brush prefabs folder and you can drag and drop those in based on whatever type of effect you're going for uh, the final thing we'll want to do in this case is to put our material onto that mesh. So in this case, we can just drag on our rainbow material. There are a few miscellaneous details, some of which, if I'm being completely honest, I still am trying to parse out and understand myself. Uh, there, That's just part of the documentation that I feel like is missing right now. And hopefully that the documentation gets added as the community kind of learns what each of these things do because I sure don't fully understand everything that's going on here. Oh, we can rename this. So let's rename that that asset we will also want to generate a new uh, GUID. So the GUID is responsible for making sure our asset is unique. Probably the easiest way to do that is to just go to tilt and then just create a new brush. Give that a second and then copy and paste it or you can just click copy GUID. Let's unlock the fields and replace and, and delete the old one. And the last thing we need to do is just assign that back to our manifest. So find the manifest in here. And then you'll see we have a, I've already kind of created a slot for that test brush and we'll just reuse that and drag, drag and drop our rainbow brush one. And with that, I think we are good to go. And with that, you can see we have our tube version of rainbow and we can just kind of quickly compare that to the other rainbow asset. If I can find it, here we go. Right. So this one, as you can see, if we take a very close look at it is based on the line, whereas our other one here is is based on that uh, cylinder. And so just like that, it's just a very quick and dirty way to customize your own asset. Of course, I'd encourage you to play around with some of the shaders and some of the different effects. One thing I should quickly point out is that all of the different shaders and effects are available under uh, when you create a new material, and then you can just select whichever shader you would like 
for that specific effect that you're going for. But otherwise, I think uh, that this is just a quick overview of how you can go about creating your own brush. If you do have other questions, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.